Hello and welcome to today's July 9th daily news report as well as ongoing stimulus check package information video. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. And if you're not, consider subscribing right now so I can keep you up to date on what's going on in Washington, D.C., the U.S. economy, money, investing, and much, much more. All right, now don't fall for scammers that are trying to get you to text them in my community feed. Don't ever text anybody that, that contacts you through YouTube. That would be crazy, right? Also, make sure that you sign up for the giveaway that Casey and I are doing where we're giving away over $3,000 in prizes and cash. 12 of you are going to win one of these amazing hats and 12 of you are going to win $250 in cash. Uh, I usually send that through PayPal, but if you don't have it, we can find another way to get you that money. So go sign up and uh, happy Friday. All right, now, according to sources, Democrats are having lots of conversations to get their agenda items all in a row so that they can then privately discuss them and Democrats can agree which ones will be in the American Families Plan so that they can move forward publicly as a unanimous body, right? So basically they wanna get everything on paper and then get everyone on the same page and then move forward so that they're, they're bulletproof when it comes to presenting this to Republicans and to the public. Now, Senator Tim Kaine, said, we need to know the top line numbers of the American Families Plan, right? So it's time to know the numbers now, he's saying. Uh, we need some sense of what the big bucket items are. Then we need to all get on the same page in the Democrat Party. Now, essentially, he's saying, listen, uh, I'm not voting for anything if it's not in writing. So get it in writing, Pelosi. Get it in writing, Schumer. Now, uh, yesterday I told you how Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said he's unlocking the path for Democrats to put everything they want into the Democrat-only bill. So this thing could be massive. I mean, we don't really know what's going to go into it, but when someone says that they're unlocking the path to put everything in, it kind of sounds like everything but the kitchen sink. Mitch McConnell gives us an idea. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So all Democrats are going to be lining up with their ideas uh, to put them into this next bill, right? Now, that doesn't mean that they will all be supported, but it's now time to start putting everything forward. Now, <clears throat> likely Republicans are going to do the same thing where they're going to say, listen, everybody get in a line. Let's all get on the same page and, and start removing items that we don't want. This is politics in Washington, D.C., right? Now, Mitch McConnell said yesterday he wouldn't be shocked if all this uh, spending amounts to about $5 trillion. So that's the price tag he's expecting. And very little of that $5 trillion makes it to the American people. Kind of like how we saw with the last COVID package where very little of the money went to COVID. So he thinks that this is a Trojan horse, a big disguise. Oh, we're going to get all this money to the people and then very little of it will go to the people. Now, McConnell got significant pushback from President Biden himself. Biden said, it's funny how McConnell is telling people in his home state that money is on the way, but he didn't vote for any of that money. McConnell rebutted President Biden later that evening by saying, I didn't vote for this money and I won't be voting for future money, but people should still know what money is coming their way. So he wasn't even trying to take credit for it. He was basically saying, listen, uh, the money is coming and you should know, but I'm not taking any credit for it. Now, McConnell said in an interview just yesterday, his biggest hang up with the bill is the high tax rate uh, that will make the United States businesses become uh, basically uncompetitive on a global e economic scale. He also said this spending increase uh, will increase American taxes by $3.2 trillion. It's a secret tax hike on the American people that they can't see or feel yet, but they will. So he's basically saying, I don't know that I'll be able to stop this, but 
In the future, you'll see why I was trying to stop it, and you will feel in your wallets why I was trying to stop it. Okay, now th these are the words of Mitch McConnell. Now, the Senate is back in the chambers on Monday, and next week we should get a ton of detail on what's going into the infrastructure bill and the social infrastructure bill or the American Families Plan. We know Democrats want to add a fourth stimulus check into the American Families Plan. We know that they want to extend and revamp unemployment. We know that they want to lower Medicaid from 65 down to age 60, while at the same time adding in dental, vision, and hearing aids. I'm going to tell you the repercussions of that, but that's what they're pushing for right now. Now, regarding Medicare and those uh, at retirement age or older, Democrats won't just be battling Republicans. They will also be dealing with health care lobbyists, which will likely be more difficult uh, to battle with than Republicans. However, Representative Ajayapal said this week she is optimistic about the American Families Plan. She believes they will get the 218 votes needed in the House and all 50 votes needed in the Senate to pass this massive social infrastructure bill. Many medical associations and hospitals are doing their own campaigning to say lowering Medicare age means lowering medical income to medical groups, which means lowering uh, medical care. So they're worried that by uh, bloating the amount of people that are on Medicare without additional money means that they're going to get less, which means that the pool got bigger, but everybody's getting worse medical care. So that, that's what they're uh, starting as their pushback against lowering Medicare age. Now, according to the Congressional Budget Office, lowering Medicare to age 60 will cost the American taxpayer $200 billion. Adding dental, vision, and hearing aids will cost the American taxpayer $358 billion. So even some Democrats are worried that this all sounds really great on paper, but how on earth are we going to pay for all of it? So far, 155 Democrats in Congress from the House and the Senate uh, are on board with lowering Medicare. By the way, I just want to say thank you guys so much for always giving these videos a like. I really appreciate it, and I just love bringing my community the news. All right, now, with President Biden trying to make his presidency about going after energy and becoming green, the price of gas has increased by 40%. Tens of thousands of jobs have been lost. The United States is importing oil from foreign enemies, not just foreign countries, but foreign enemies. And Biden might be labeled as the president of pollution and greenhouse gas. Now, here's why. A new study shows that based on energy demand in the United States, we are going to see an increase in the production and use of coal by over 15%. Now, this is the largest increase of coal production and coal use since 1990. So in the last 30 years, we've not seen this much need for coal increase at this rapid of a pace. Coal uh, is a great energy source, but it adds to pollution, uh, greenhouse gases, the warming of the planet. All of the things that the Democrats and President Biden say they're trying to unravel. But the truth is, it, this is like algebra, right? If you take from one side of the equation, it ends up taking away from the other side, right? So in order to balance out. So as they're trying to push uh, green energy, renewable energy, uh, we've, we've attacked oil, but now coal is going to rise and supplant that. And, uh, anyway, that, that's what's going on in the news today right now. All right. Now, since Biden's announcement of pulling U.S. troops out of Afghanistan by September 11th, the Taliban, uh, has pushed back hard to take ground that they lost while the United States had, uh, occupying forces. The Pentagon just this morning admitted that the Taliban likely now controls 85% of Afghanistan. So critics have said, we've spent trillions of dollars and 20 years and thousands of military lives only to exit with the bad guys back in control. So 20 years, 
trillions of dollars, thousands of lives. Now, President Biden said he is sticking to his plan and won't send another generation of young Americans to fight and die over there. I, I, I agree. I, I think it's crazy what's been happening over there. All right, now two big issues are arising as Americans go back to work. Many are applying for the 9 million open jobs only to be told they are overqualified and can't be paid what they are making before the pandemic because that industry, uh, that this new industry doesn't support the income wages that their past industry could pay. So as people shift to different industries or sectors of the economy, there's pay differences and that's making it very hard for people to either get the pay that they were getting or that they're being told they were overqualified. Now, the second big hurdle is daycare. As women and families gear up to go back to work, many are struggling to pay for daycare from the wages that they will be paid. Now, the American Families Plan seeks to make sweeping changes uh, for either making daycare free or supplementing the cost of daycare. The child tax credit checks or the kids stimulus checks will be hitting bank accounts and mailboxes next week. So some might find this extra income helpful, but when it comes to daycare, for most families uh, and parents, the cost of daycare exceeds the cost of rent or the cost of a mortgage. So this is something that is uh, being reviewed and researched uh, and is a big part of the American Families Plan. Now, according to Bernie Sanders, the country now needs to focus on helping working families and not just helping billionaires. Like I've said over the past few weeks, it seems that almost all talking points from Democrats are shifting over to families with kids. And I know that's hard for many people in the community that are either single um, with no kids or they've already raised their kids. But th this is what's going on in the news right now. Now, Democrats are pressuring their own Supreme Court Justice, Judge Stephen Breyer, to retire so that they can immediately replace him with somebody younger from the Democratic Party. Democrats say this needs to happen so that we can get someone young on the bench in order to counter Trump adding three justices during his presidency. Justice Breyer has not appreciated the pressure from his own party. All right, now it's been discovered that Nancy Pelosi's husband recently made over $5 million in Google stock trades. Now, there's nothing wrong with making money, but Pelosi herself has said politicians' families should need to have their money blindly invested because they get inside information on companies before the general public. Also, how is Pelosi and other politicians supposed to make decisions about big tech or legislation when it comes to social media if behind the scenes they're making millions of dollars from these companies, right? How do you not be biased? How do you not favor companies you're making millions of dollars from? Now, according to Nancy Pelosi, she had no idea this was happening. So Pelosi is either so rich she doesn't notice a $5 million increase or she's lying. I'm not here to say which one, but wouldn't it be nice to be so rich that if five million dollars fell in your lap, you didn't even notice, right? I, <laughs> hello, I, I will take that problem. <laughs> All right, now this same situation arose last year with a Republican senator uh, named Senator Perdue. Uh, he sold stocks right after a, a closed door COVID meeting and was later investigated. Now, nothing ended up coming of it, but this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These politicians from both sides, not just Democrats, not just Republicans, they get inside information, and how could they not be biased, right? When you're making millions of dollars to then say, oh, we're, we're not gonna punish these guys, or we're gonna let them get away with things. So my question to my community, and I definitely wanna hear from you guys, is, should politicians be able to knowingly invest in companies they are supposed to be creating legislation around for their voter, or does it create a conflict of interest? Let me know in the comments. Man, I wish I had $5 million from Google. All right. Now, the second richest man in the world, Elon Musk of Tesla, sold all of his real estate, consolidated his investments, and moved from California to Texas. 
His new house is 400 square feet and cost about $50,000. Pretty crazy, right? A multi-billionaire living in a tiny house way out in the country in Texas. Uh, what's going on, right? Is he going crazy or what? What's what's up, right? All right, now, if you've purchased some of the stocks that I've shared on my channel in the past, you likely saw a couple of days of big drops with a very nice bounce back over the past two days. Uh, I hope you were able to buy on this dip and ride it back up and make even more profits. Uh, I call this strengthening your position, right? Now, I'll be sharing another new stock that I just dumped a bunch of money into, probably tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, so do watch for that video if you enjoy learning about money and stocks. Yesterday, Wells Fargo announced unexpectedly that they won't be doing personal lines of credit going forward and will actually be closing all of the personal lines of credit that already exist. Uh, now, this could be a sign of a major shift in bank thinking about debt or something they're preparing for that we're just not aware of. Uh, either way, Senator Elizabeth Warren is pushing back on the sudden closures and demanding credit companies don't count this closure against people's credit score, though they likely will. So if you were connected to Wells Fargo credit lines, your credit line is drying up and your credit will likely be hit. All right, now this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more. Um, I hope you guys find these uh, updates to be valuable. I love bringing you guys the news on what's going on in Washington, D.C., the economy, money, and much, much more. Before you go into the weekend, do make sure to sign up to be one of the winners of over $3,000 in cash and prizes. I'm excited to give that money away. I hope you have a great weekend. As you go into the weekend, I want to remind you that you are amazing. <laughs> I really appreciate you being in my community. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on the next video.